I don't think there was really a specific time that I can pinpoint in my life that I fell in love with music because I've actually always been surrounded by music. My dad is a professional musician and music educator, and my mom is a singer. In fact, my parents were in a band together before I was born. They had a jazz combo. So it was kind of just as soon as I existed, I was surrounded by music. I never really knew the world another way. And so I guess it was kind of only natural that I ended up becoming a musician myself. I think one of the most fun things about playing the cello is that it does kind of have the range that's the most similar to a human voice. So when you're playing the cello, not only is it fun and easy to play songs that people sing, but you also end up feeling like you're singing yourself, you know, your instrument is your voice and I think that is a little bit more literal with the cello and I think that's a big part of why I love it so much. I feel really lucky to have had the career opportunities that I've had out here in Vegas. I came out here originally to be in an electric string quartet and that ended up leading to a whole lot of other things including playing for a lot of televised events like the Latin Grammys, the iHeartRadio Festival, the Billboard Music Awards, but also just my career has taken me to different countries, so many different states. I've played on so many different events that have all been unique and fun. And best of all, I've gotten to work with so many incredible people along the way, both on stage and behind the scenes. So I'm really thankful to have had that in my career. Right now, I perform with Aerosmith in their Deuces Are Wild residency here in Las Vegas but I've also had the chance to perform with Motley Crue and actually at the time one of the guys in the band told us that that was the first time they'd ever had actual strings with them on stage so that was kind of amazing. Um, I've also gotten to perform with a number of artists at the Latin Grammys including Ricky Martin, Connie Garcia, Laura Pausini. I've performed with DJ Kygo, Lady Antebellum, I've played with Disturbed a few times, Halsey, I did a short residency with Richard Marks, and I've even appeared in a music video with Celine Dion and Ryan Reynolds for the song Ashes, which was released for the movie Deadpool 2. So a lot of great opportunities that I'm really thankful to have had. For me, I think the most important thing to keep in mind when you're learning the cello or playing the cello or anywhere in your career really is just to try to eliminate stress as much as possible. And I think string players get a little bit stress prone because we do have to play a lot of complicated stuff. Playing a string instrument is not easy to do at the best of times. And I think a lot of us get so much in our own head in the practice room that we're a little bit more prone to stage fright when we actually are out there in front of an audience. So when you're out in front of people and even when you're just practicing by yourself, I think it's really important to just relax and focus on playing without tension. Always make sure you breathe. Like, I had a long period of time where I kind of realized I wasn't breathing when I was playing, and you would think that would be the first thing you would do. <laughs> but breathing and releasing tension and smiling, you know, just making sure that you're as relaxed as possible when you're playing, because that will improve your experience in so many different ways. I think probably the biggest adversity that I've had to deal with in my career was actually self-induced, because, you know, I've talked a lot about playing without tension and listening to your body and there was a period of time where I was not taking this advice and I brought this upon myself. I was not warming up sufficiently. I was not strengthening my body and uh, strengthening the muscles that I don't use when I play. And I was playing with gear that wasn't quite right for me and it did end up leading to some issues with tendonitis and inflammation, repetitive stress, all that stuff that they warn you about that you want to avoid. So, you know, it's honestly a terrifying experience when it first happens to you because, you know, it's like you're playing a gig and over the course of the night, you start to not really be able to feel your arm anymore and you start feeling that tingliness up and down your arm, you're losing feeling, and 
it's really scary because you don't know why this is happening, you don't know how long it's going to last, you don't know if you're going to fix it, you don't know if it's going to permanently affect your career. But thankfully, I've had some really awesome physical therapists and I've been able to deal with that to a degree where I can perform normally again. And it's really been a blessing and a lot of lessons learned along the way about taking good care of myself. I did have an amazing mentor in my career in the form of my college cello professor, Dr. Melissa Kraut. And she was amazing for me in many ways, honestly, because she helped me grow not only as a musician, but also as a human being. And you know, when you're with somebody constantly as a teacher for four years of college, then they're really growing along with you as you become more of an adult <laughs> and just everything that comes with that along the way. So she was very supportive of everything that I wanted to do in terms of the unconventional aspect of cello playing. Like she always supported all the recordings I was doing on the side and she even let me use my electric cello on my senior recital. And in my understanding, that was actually the first time in the history of my school, I think, that someone had used an electric instrument on a recital. Like, I was told later that one of the deans actually came in and was watching me. <laughs> so thankfully, she was really great about letting me explore that aspect of what I was interested in and passionate about. I think that success as far as a performing career is kind of an ever-evolving thing. I don't really feel like there's necessarily one definition of success in terms of that because no matter what you do, there's always going to be new opportunities, there's going to be new things that come up, new experiences that you're able to have, and just it's, it's never ending. I don't think there's a point where you reach it, there's always going to be more things to do. But as far as my arranging career, I definitely feel like I have achieved success in that regard. And that is because, for me, success in arranging is based on the number of people that I've been able to impact in a positive way with the work that I've been doing. And over the last few years, it's been amazing as I'll just get messages out of the blue on social media or wherever from people in faraway states or countries that I've never met and may never meet, but they're affected enough by what I do to write to me and tell me, oh, we love your arrangements, we love playing them, um, they sound great and they're so much fun and I just wanted to say thank you for making these charts. So for me, that is absolutely incredible to hear from people and I definitely take that as a measurement of success. It has been so much fun working with this awesome VRLU team and I have loved this experience every step of the way. It's been super easy to work with everybody. They've been really, really helpful in terms of working with me for creating the content, walking me through everything step by step so I know exactly what to expect out of the experience, um, just making me feel very prepared and comfortable on set here at Electric Shop Recording, all the way through to making sure that we have enough Starbucks available in the studio <laughs> to help me get through the day. So it's definitely been a great experience and I've had so much fun working with this team. I think one of the most important things to take away from my VRLU experience is to follow what you're passionate about, regardless of whether anyone else is doing it with you. Um, just follow what you really, really wanna do and find your own path. You know, everybody's path is different. Everybody has something unique to offer. And I always think it's really important too to take every opportunity that you can get, regardless of whether or not it's something that's in your comfort zone. Because taking opportunities for things that you don't normally do just helps you grow as a person, it helps you grow in your career, and it just gives you a wide variety of different skills and helps you to just enrich your life in ways that you wouldn't have imagined. So take those opportunities and follow your dreams.